Gene fusions are rare in common cancers, but it has become very uh, interesting in the recent years because new exciting agents has been developed targeting uh, the oncogenic gene fusions. It has been uh, stipulated that maybe 5,000 patients in the United States harbor these fusions, for instance, N-track fusions. So from that you can also get an idea how frequent it would be in Europe if you uh, anticipate that the incidence is the same. So it is quite few patients, uh, but they are there and they will clearly have benefit from, from having these new uh, agents. In uh, some of the rare cancers, like for instance infantile fibrosarcoma, secretory breast cancer, there uh, it seems like the gene fusion is, or is somewhat indicative of the tumor. So it is uh, part of the diagnostic workup. If you identify this fusion and suspect this cancer, then it confirms that actually it is, for instance, infantile fibrosarcoma. So it's part of the diagnostic workup. And this uh, sort of indicates that uh, it is the main driver of the disease. So if you can target it, then you can, then you can hit the disease. The gene fusions seems to uh, in induce an aggressive behavior of the tumors. So if you have a cancer, for instance, a lung cancer, that is negative for other known activating mutations, and the cancer doesn't really respond as expected to, uh, to common therapy, then you should consider to test for gene fusions because uh, it may be more aggressive, more metastatic, uh, and less responsive to, uh, to the standard of care. If you discover a gene fusion, like for instance N-track fusion in a patient, it may have a dramatic impact because the data we have so far has shown a very high response rate and also durable responses. So for the individual patient, it has a tremendous impact. But for the community, it's difficult because uh, the fusions are rare, especially in the common cancers. So we don't really know how many patients in total are having, harboring these fusions. So we need treatment strategies for different tumor types where we consider when should we get the, the sort of, the thought, should we test for a fusion? I think based on the knowledge that we have today with uh, emerging new agents, some of them uh, just approved by EMA and FDA, uh, then we should start thinking about looking for gene fusions because the agent seems to be very active uh, and safe to use and they induce durable responses. So we really need to find these patients because they can really benefit. For each tumor type has to, to make some strategies because they each have different uh, frequencies of activating mutations. They have different setups of, of how the diagnostic workup is, uh, which which mutations should we look for, how, how do we do set the diagnosis. Uh, and I think that uh, in a way, maybe everything will in, in the coming years again be easier because right now we are, we are making specific molecular testing for individual genes. So first we test for this gene, it's negative, then we test for, the, for this gene, then it's negative. And every time it's time consuming and costly. So at one turning point we'll find out it might be easier, f faster, and maybe also cheaper to do it all at one time using NGS. Mm -hmm.